Governor Matt Bevin, Congressman Hal Rogers, and others were in eastern Kentucky Monday to announce a new program that could bring big changes to the mountains. And Kentucky's Horse Racing Commission made a decision on the status of original Derby winner Maximum Security's disqualification Monday. Plus, Chris Stapleton gives a little something special back to his hometown. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 5.30 on this Tuesday, May the 7th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Well, the rain that we saw over the weekend was able to reduce all the pollen and gunk that's been going around, but a couple nice days in a row, you're seeing that shoot right back up into some levels. It's bothering everybody, mm -hmm. including me. Brandon, are we going to see a relief from any more of this pollen and stuff at all this week? Yeah, we'll see some rain chances return with that cold front a little bit later on. But I tell you, I was driving home yesterday in the evening hours and people were cooking out and people were cutting grass. And those are two of the best smells in the mm -hmm. world, even though the grass, you know, stirs up the pollen. So let's take a look at what's going on across the region this morning. McKee, a little zoomed in here this morning, but back in the town and you can see not a whole lot of activity there as we head out the door up on top of the mountain. US 119, Winesburg Pine Mountain there, all quiet. A little bit of traffic overnight, but not too much. Live pinpoint Doppler radar, nice and quiet this morning as well. I think we're not seeing a whole lot of action today. Won't see too much tomorrow either, but Thursday and Friday, that's when it starts to build back in 40s upper 40s in the valley some 50s on the ridge tops this morning your planner you're going to see those 40s and 50s give way to about 70 by lunchtime 74 actually in the low 80s for daytime highs a little bit later today uh, the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes will all righty brandon thank you well eastern kentucky hosted a few distinguished guests yesterday governor matt bevin congressman hal rogers and a handful of others they made stops at four different regional airports announcing a brand new aviation maintenance technician program that is expected to create hundreds of jobs appalachian regional commission is awarding nearly one and a half million dollars to kickstart the program State officials say there is high demand for aviation maintenance technicians across the state, with plane owners currently taking their aircrafts out of state for maintenance. <clears throat> Excuse me, with this program, Eastern Kentuckians could soon fill that need. We're having to look for places to make a living, things to do. And that's good because it, it turns on your imaginations and we're seeing a lot of new things we've never done before that's providing jobs. And that's, uh, that's what this is all about. Heads on training programs will be taught at regional airports in Laurel, Perry, Martin, and Madison counties. Classes will be taught jointly between Eastern Kentucky University and the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. They could begin as early as this fall. Well, Governor Bevin is working to drum up, drum up support rather for a pension plan for quasi government agencies. You'll remember he vetoed an original version of the plan last month. Yesterday, members of the governor's staff met with Democratic lawmakers, hoping to get them on board with the proposal before calling a special session. Hillary Thornton explains the bill and reaction from Democrats in Frankfurt. But the intent is, is to make sure that we have a plan that can pass. Some of Governor Matt Bevin's executive staff spending the past week or so going through the governor's pension proposal with lawmakers. The Republican House caucus receiving a briefing last week. Today, the Democratic caucus getting there. There's still lots of questions they have, and, and you know, the governor's office has been very open about you know, addressing those, and, and you know, I, I don't want to diminish in any way that they spent two hours with us today. Now, with most lawmakers being briefed on this new proposal, discussions are underway leading up to them being called into special session. House Democratic leaders say part of their discussions will include any possible amendments or even a standalone bill. The governor's bill proposing another one year freeze for the quasi governmental agencies, which are things like local health departments, child advocacy centers and rape crisis centers, as well as some public universities, giving them another year at their current pension contribution rate of 49% versus the jump to 84%. It also gives them options for getting out of the system. 
The idea is, is that we provide a 30-year period for these organizations to pay off their liability if they choose to get out. That is the part many members are having a problem with. They are for extending the freeze, but have big concerns over what exiting the state's pension system could mean for employees that have paid in, as well as what it could mean as far as money lost for the state. I have real concerns about the bill that's proposed today would end up in court anyway. I've heard from a number of legislators that they don't want to dig another deep hole in the Kentucky retirement system by solely implementing a freeze that doesn't have a path forward for these entities. In Frankfurt, Hillary Thornton. Now we have no word on when the governor might call lawmakers in for the special session. Well, Kentucky's Horse Racing Commission rejected an appeal from the owner of Maximum Security. The horse disqualified after winning the Kentucky Derby. It's the first time a Kentucky Derby winner has ever been stripped of the title. An attorney for Maximum Security's owner filed the appeal with the commission Monday, but it was denied the same day. The commission cited no right to appeal a disqualification under Kentucky law. Twin Spires, the official online betting site of Churchill Downs, and the Kentucky Derby is refunding win bets on Maximum Security up to $10. Yesterday was an emotional day in Frankfurt as people gathered to remember police officers lost in the bluegrass last year. Officer Scotty Hamilton, end of watch, March 13, 2018. The names of officers killed in the line of duty were added to the Fallen Officers Memorial. Those included Pikeville Police Officer Scotty Hamilton. In total, 60 names were read, 60 people given a salute for the sacrifices they made serving our communities. They're special people too. And they lost their lives or somehow or another with illness or violence and all different reasons, you know, and they deserve to be respected in the highest way. Six officers were recognized as line of duty deaths. Three of the six died in the same month, March 2018. Second means the most to police. Seconds mean the most to police when officers are responding to a call. When their vehicles do not work, that could pose extreme danger. The Johnson County Sheriff's Department is getting a new cruiser. With the help from the fiscal court, a $17,500 grant will be used to purchase the new set of wheels. Some of their vehicles have around 160,000 miles on the clock. Deputy Tim Clark says their top priority is keeping the county safe. Well, I mean, we got to get to the call. That's the main thing. And if we've got vehicles that's not dependable, I mean, that, they could put a lot of people in danger. This is just the first set of many grants they hope to get. Sheriff Doug Saylor says with help from the fiscal court, they want to get a new cruiser each year in order to phase out some of their older vehicles. Officials are looking for a man who robbed a gas station in the Flat Lake community of Knox County at gunpoint. Officials say surveillance video, you can see some of it here, captured the vehicle the man was driving. They are looking for a 2012 Jeep Liberty or Commander with one of the brake lights out. The case is also unusual because the man, because of what the man was wearing. He, uh, he had a, a, a ghillie suit on, which is like a sniper type suit. You know that's used, uh, uh, you know, for hunting in military type situations, and and covered his body in in that, which is which is kind of, which is odd. The Knox County Sheriff's Department is investigating. If you think you know who the man in the pictures is, you are urged to call the Sheriff's Department at 606-546-3181. A woman in Laurel County is facing charges after deputies say she made up a story involving a gun. Deputies say they went to check things out after Marilyn Mitchell called in about a disturbance with a gun. When they got there, Mitchell said she hadn't seen, seen a weapon all day. They also realized she was high. She faces a couple of charges, including falsely reporting an incident. To Rock Castle County now, where a woman is facing charges this morning after police say she led them to marijuana plants sitting in a windowsill. Officers say they also found two containers of marijuana seeds and dozens of prescription pills, none of them in the right container. Jesse Thomas is facing multiple charges because a five-year-old boy was at the home when officers were there. Thomas's arrest citation, citation says she admitted to knowing about the marijuana, but did not know what the pills were for. A Houston community holding out hope after a precious four-year-old girl who had undergone multiple brain surgeries disappeared over the weekend. Loved ones need help finding four-year-old Malia Davis, who vanished over the weekend. 
According to police, Malia was last seen Friday evening riding in her stepfather's vehicle. Malia's stepfather, Darion Vence, told authorities he pulled his car over to check on what he thought was a flat tire. Moments later, a pickup truck reportedly pulled up behind him. Two Hispanic males get out. One of them makes a comment saying that Malia looks very nice, looks very sweet. Uh, the other male hits Darian in the head. Uh, Darian loses consciousness. Vince told police he remembers waking up in the back of that pickup truck, but was in and out of consciousness until six the following day. His son was with him, but no signs of Malia. And it was at the hospital when Darian finally reported Malia missing. Well, country music star and Johnson County native Chris Stapleton is giving a little something special back to his hometown. Kentucky Special Olympics received a $5,000 donation for its Johnson County team last week. Representatives said the check was one of the largest donations Johnson County Special Olympics has received. They say it is a blessing to be thought of by Stapleton and they plan to use the funds to purchase team uniforms for their athletes. It's a big deal for our athletes. We have athletes that range from 7 to 62. And so it's a big deal to, to feel part of a group and to look like a team and to um, be like any other sport around. The money donated to the team came from Stapleton's Outlaw State of Kind Fund, which, according to his website, exists to support causes that are close to the hearts of the Stapleton family. With traffic alert for you, for those of you out of Pike County this morning, if you drive through Cole Run, be on the lookout for road construction. A Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Safety Improvement Project is underway. There are multiple areas throughout that strip of US 23 where workers will be widening areas, adding quick curbs and increasing roadway lighting. Sarah George with the Transportation Cabinet District 12 asks drivers to use caution through work zones or they can expect a ticket. We're not going to reduce the speed limit any further in the work zone, but we are going to have police enforcement of the posted speed limit of 45. Now, George says they hope to keep traffic delays to a minimum. The construction is said to last around four months. We have a full list of everything they plan to complete on our website. It looks like people who haven't seen Avengers Endgame yet have to dodge spoilers from everywhere, even from trailers for other movies. We'll have more on which movie trailer to avoid until you're all caught up. It was a great day to be outside yesterday, and today will be almost a carbon copy of your Monday, except maybe just a touch warmer. I'll have the full forecast about three minutes.